to tell us about uh, Sam Davis's uh, case for inclusion there? Well, he's a player in form. Uh, been impressed with him in the early parts of the season. I think that uh, when you watch Sam's game, uh, his kicking game and his running game uh, is something which obviously uh, the Ospreys in particular, uh, when they played against the Blues, uh, have been fortunate to have. I think the strength and depth between both Sam and Dan, uh, obviously Dan missing the first couple of games because he's an NDC player, afforded Sam the opportunity to be picked on a week-to-week -week basis, which is really important as a decision maker, I think Sam benefited from that. Uh, I know Sam, ca uh, Dan came back then for the Ulster and the Leinster game, and Sam had the nod uh, for the game against the Blues. And uh, he's comfortable with the ball in hand, and uh, I'm looking forward to working with him as is Neil and Matt. Really, I think that uh, it's a player in form, and it's important you pick players in form. How close is he, do you think, to challenging for a first-choice spot? Oh, look, the other two tens are pretty experienced. Uh, you know, Dan Bigger, uh, at this moment in time, is probably, uh, you know, edging the number one uh, ten position. I think that uh, he's a big match player. Uh, he certainly uh, played well in the first two tests out in uh, New Zealand. And I think that uh, it's almost good, isn't it, as a player, when you've got competition, particularly internally within your region, and that will happen collectively when he comes in. And uh, for Dan, uh, for Gareth and Sam, it, it will be interesting and intriguing to watch them under pressure, uh, working with good quality players. And uh, it's great when you have that ingredient as a coach. Uh, Rhys Priestland's exclusion, is that because he's not in the first three fly halves on <coughs> form or is it a result of the... Selection policy on players based outside where? I spoke to Reese yesterday. Uh, Reese is the wild card option. As you are aware, he played one game. He played against Poe on Saturday. He's been out inju injured for a period of time. His selection, as I suggested him, is a wild card uh, situation. So, uh, obviously, you've seen the squad. Uh, Jamie, George, and Toby are the three wild card options. Selection of Tilope, when do you expect him to be picked? Well, hopefully he'll be up and running early November. Uh, I think that uh, you know we sat down as a coaching team, and you know all of us agreed as coaches who have played the game. Uh, whilst Toby isn't fit, his uh, his experience and when he's around the team room uh, will be invalid to those players who are playing and. I certainly learnt as a player and the coaches, uh, when we spoke about it yesterday morning, you certainly learn off players and it gives the opportunity, whoever is chosen in that position, you know, we, we know Toby's been involved and only missed two games in three years, fantastic British Lion, world class player and we, we see an opportunity that he, he might be available towards the end of the autumn series. And as coaches, uh, we thought that was uh, you know, worthwhile having him in the squad, spending time with the back row and the number eights who are going to play. And uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll do a, uh, you know, a good job in that department. Who do you see your contenders as number eight then? Because there's several, obviously, who are playing several positions in that squad. Yeah, there are. Uh, and it'll be interesting. Obviously, we were impressed with Dan Baker you know, in terms of playing for the Ospreys. Uh, we got the opportunity. Uh, James King has played at number eight, played against the Chiefs, and uh, also got the opportunity uh, with uh, Ross, Mo Ross Moriarty uh, you know, to step up. So there, there are choices, and uh, there will be selection dilemmas. And as always, uh, we'll see our players in training in, to, in terms of the combinations in the back row. And uh, the opportunity knocks, you know, and that's that's the key message uh, for that number eight position, really, because you know Toby has been the incumbent for you know pretty a long time. Are any of the players based outside Wales available for the Australia game or not? Well, I know there's been a lot commented about it. Uh, we've had no uh, formal uh, conversations with uh, obviously any of the English clubs. But uh, obviously, haven't spoken to the players. Uh, you know, they are available uh, to play. Uh, some of them are available for the Australian game, and then we'll have to make sure that we'll pick from the availability which are available. If that makes sense. Do you know which ones might be available? Well, the players who I've spoken to, uh, you know, like Sir Jamie, uh, George, and Toby, 
obviously Toby being injured, so Jamie and George, as far as we are concerned, uh, having spoken to them, are available for the Australian game. Agreed by As I course. said to you, in terms of like, there's been no formal uh, communication between ourselves and PRL. Word about the other uh, uncapped player in the squad, uh, Rory Thornton. Uh, look, I'm delighted for Rory. Uh, you know, obviously he's come up through the under twenties. Uh, his early performances, particularly in the wide channels and looking at athletic base in terms of skill set, is something which. From New Zealand, coming back from New Zealand, that uh, you know when we sat down, uh, you know all of us as coaches and with the regions, it's been something about you know the point of difference at the moment. Maybe in, in New Zealand rugby is uh, you know the front five, and uh, the skill set of the front five and the wide channels and decision making. And you know from a coach's perspective, to see the Ospreys uh, you know play and seeing Roy in those wide channels and Alan winning the wide channels making good decisions, being accurate and being that one extra pass that scores a try. Uh, you know, Rory's obviously shown that and now obviously he's forged that partnership when he's played with Alan Wynn when Bradley's been injured. Uh, so we're looking forward to that competitive nature between the second rows. And sorry, just to, to clarify <coughs> the point, Lee Halfpenny, is he available for Australia or not? Yes, yeah, yeah. he is. So too long as Australian players may be playing as well, I guess. I don't know. Thanks. Rob, just actually name this. Are you saying that your understanding from the players is that George and Jamie have got written into their contracts that they have full release for all Wales games? I've spoken to the players and they have told me they will be available for the Australian game. Okay. Should we suggest so? Okay. So. And nobody else of the English contingent falls into that category as far as you are aware? Those three players I've spoken to, uh, Toby as well, obviously Toby being injured, those three players I've spoken to and asked them about their availability for the Australian game and they've said yes. Does, does it, they're going to pay and ask answering questions about this almost every year. We've talked about it before, I mean, it's one of the issues with players being based outside Wales and whenever there's the outer window test you do find yourself dealing with this situation. <sighs> and... Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's the nature at the moment in time in terms of players making decisions uh, on their livelihood, on their families, and they're going to be looking after themselves and making those decisions. And obviously we, we have to pick the best side available uh, to play against Australia. Uh, you know, as I, when I met uh, the press only a couple of weeks ago, you know, I'm a huge believer in that uh, seeing the best players play for, uh, in Wales. And uh, if, if players aren't available for the Australian game, you know, we'll pick uh, the best available from the squad that we have selected, and we have <coughs> we have confidence in every player which we have chosen in that squad. Uh, so, in terms of the training, and sometimes being planned and organised uh, for the next two weeks, uh, and not losing players going back to uh, the clubs which they might have to go back to, uh, might might give us uh, a bit of an edge. Uh, going into that Australian game. Uh, I'll never forget our first game when we played England back in 2008. I think there were 13 Ospreys in that selection. Uh, but, you know, we'll be planned and organised and we'll select from the best players who are available for the Australian game. Are you seeing the back three in minutes, right? Yeah, I, uh, look, when we sat down as coaches, uh, it's always great to have, uh, you know, a, a lion of someone's leave his experience, uh, and Alex Cuthbert, you know, certainly comes into that category. Uh, the one thing about Alex, he's in you know, 42 tests. Uh, I think he scored 15 tries. He's a try scorer, and having communicated with, uh, you know, Danny, uh, Danny Wilson, the Blues head coach, over the last six, seven weeks, he's a little bit unfortunate with the injuries, but there was, there's been elements when he has played. Uh, you know, he's certainly getting back near his best. Uh, he'll come in and he'll he'll work hard as he always has done. Uh, there's a lot of experience in that uh, in the back three. Uh, players who are able to play on the left wing and full back, right wing and full back. It gives us uh, good combinations. And let's not forget Hallam because Hallam uh, he has been playing particularly well for uh, the Dragons. His ability to beat the uh, a defender, his left foot kicking option, 
uh, gives us another option in that combination in the back three. So uh, it's it's good to have those choices and the comp competition with experience, which is key. Yeah, look, uh, Scott Andrews. I think you know, referring to the conversation early in terms of the, you know, you almost learn as coaches uh, through different campaigns, and certainly New Zealand was certainly a huge learning curve for us as coaches. And when you look at uh, you know the makeup of that front five, uh, you know the ability to to catch pass, make decisions. High speed meters, uh, you know, the games go in there, and uh, it's important that uh, you know we jump on t on board with that. And I think that's going to be a key element. No one knows Simon how many scrums they're going to be in a game. Uh, you know, he'd been in Australia Rugby World Cup uh, in the pool, and there must have been about 16, 17 scrums. We've played in other games where there's only been eight. Uh, unfortunately, when you have a scrum in certain positions, they can hurt you. So, it's a, you know, key international rugby is your set piece. But, uh, you know, having that ability to scrum, lift and be uh, athletic around the park, having a good skill set is going to be a key for this national team moving forward. How different are Wales going to be on the back of the summer from what we've seen over the last few seasons? Interesting, Hamish. Uh, I thought the first two tests against New Zealand, uh, when you look back, particularly in the summer uh, experience with Argentina and Australia and South Africa against New Zealand, I don't think we did too bad. Uh, New Zealand currently conceded 1.1 try a game. We scored five tries in two tests. Uh, we, we weren't uh, the third test. That wasn't acceptable, that performance. Uh, but... The first two, first two tests, I thought, uh, you know, throughout the 65 minutes, we were hugely competitive. We're the only side uh, in the last six six months that was leading half time against New Zealand, drawing 10 all in Wellington, and the players can take great confidence for that. But as coaches, we want want to go to the next level, so. You know, we we want to work on the elements which I spoke to Simon about uh, in in the Y channels, and Test match rugby is about being accurate. Uh, doesn't probably anything to do with the game plan you actually play. It's how accurate you are with your game plan and your defensive line speed and making your tackles is being accurate. And uh, that's the challenge as coaches when the players come in that uh, is making sure we set standards. And within those standards, we play a game with intensity, uh, with execution and having the capacity to go 80 minutes, which New Zealand at this moment in time are uh, you know, a little further ahead than us. Uh, and you know that's the challenge for all of us as players and coaches. Rob, there are, there are two Welsh derbies next week. Um, is your plan to release any players back? Um, from your own perspective, perhaps giving some players game time or... In terms of any requests in the regions, can you talk to the situation? Yeah, so, uh, you know, th throughout the selection process with all the coaches, uh, you know, uh, been speaking to Danny Kingsley, uh, Steve and Wayne uh, in terms of the selection. Uh, obviously, the additional players as well that have been uh, selected. We've we tried to with the additional players, uh, having looked at the selections over the last six, seven weeks. Uh, because we understand that uh, you know the the derbies are important. Uh, we've got a test match to uh, prepare for, and we have to make sure from a from a player's perspective we give the players the best opportunity to be at their best. A week next Saturday, uh, two weeks next Saturday, or two weeks yesterday, sorry, or Saturday, uh, and I've spoken to the the coaches and. We have to wait till the players come in and they'll have those conversations maybe Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Uh, obviously, they are important, the derbies. Uh, it, you do f understand uh, the coaches from a coach's perspective in terms of the players that they are losing. But ultimately, uh, you know, we, we need to prepare for a test match. So I think those conversations will continue to happen, Simon, uh, in the next week or so. Well, I looked at the, the fixture when our autumn series came out and those fixtures came out on the 2nd December 2015. 
So I looked then at the Guinness Pro 12 and it was the 13th of July 2016. So you can make what you want from that. Yeah. Rob, you said a few weeks ago that um, the win ratio at home has been 70% in the last five years and you want to improve on that. Yeah. Better it, it was the word. Uh, three victories at a minimum target for the sort of you're not going to uh, get me to say two, three, or four. Uh, that's why I came out with 70%. Uh, there will be an internal message to the players. They'll know the standards and what we expect from a coach's perspective. So uh, there's going to be internal messages. Uh, I think that uh, you know this first game is always in the autumn series. A little bit different for us uh, as coaches and players because it's normally the last game. It's the first game, uh, so that that two-week period going into that game, it's really important that we use our time wisely. Uh, we pre prepare our players to the best of the ability, which hopefully might give us, uh, you know, a, a better opportunity, uh, and obviously give players uh, the ability uh, to be at their best. And I think that uh, you know, the seventy percent, what I use is seventy percent over the year. Uh, because obviously the home games in the Six Nations are going to be pretty important. And also, uh, you know, we feel that playing at home uh, in front of other best supporters in the world and playing at the Principality Stadium, that, uh, you know, we have to be on edge. Uh, and I think that our away form has almost been really good. You know, when you look at our Six Nations form in particular, I just feel as a co from a, coaching's, a coach's perspective that... Uh, our home form can be a little bit better than what it is, and uh, it's a figure which we come up with, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we can get to that, Ross. Given the fact that Japan have come on in leaps and bounds, and we saw them beat South Africa in the World Cup, <coughs> often in the autumn, one of the four games is considered a chance for you to blood <coughs> new players or to put an experimental side out. Will you be treating the Japan game that way this time, or do you think they're strong enough now to warrant that? A strong Wales uh, uh, Japan, a, a fantastic team, as all the other teams that were playing the Autumn Series. The experience the group of coaches had and the players had in Rugby World Cup to play England, Fiji and Australia, I don't think through choice we would like to go through that, uh, that fixture list again. Uh, and I think in the next eight months, we've got an opportunity to control where we go. And uh, it's important that we'll, be, we'll select the best sides available for the next four games. Uh, and that's so important in terms of IR, IRB ranking because of the experience we've had, you know, 2011, you know, with South Africa and Samoa. And like, likewise in 2015 with the, those th th uh, three teams. So if, if you can control your destiny to a certain extent, you're going to control it in the next eight months. So... Uh, the, the strength and depth which we feel we have, we feel we we can be really competitive uh, throughout the four games in the autumn series. Well, four years on from ever doing this before, does it feel different? Do you feel a different coach? In yeah, I think it feels different. I think I think it feels different because of the experience that we've had as coaches. Uh, in particular, uh, I think we've got a fantastic uh, coaching team. I think it feels different because obviously Warren has said that he's going uh, in 2019 and that's the probably most important aspect of it. But as I said to uh, the coaches and I spoke to Warren, is that I'm still interim head coach. Uh, you know, all the coaches that I work with, whilst we're good friends, we demand standards from each other and we expect standards from each other. And I think that's the same message we give to our players. And I'm just looking forward to, once again, working with the players, working with the coaching team. It's great to have Matt Charrett on board, uh, something which we didn't have back in the autumn 2012. Uh, and I think that, particularly when you look at the integrated coaching teams now throughout the world in, in World Rugby, everyone looks after their own uh, s skill in terms of defence, attack, forwards, some of line-out coaches, contact coaches. And I think that it's so important that you uh, specialise in that department. And I, I'm, I'm, re I'm really pleased that Matt, uh, you know, and, and we're able to actually 
have that conversation with Danny, uh, which has allowed Matt to come on board in the autumn series and looking forward to working with him in the coaching team because I know how highly he's thought of in both England and Wales. And uh, it's, uh, it's exciting times. I'm sure the players will benefit from his experience as well. What's the um, latest situation with Sam Warburton? Well, I spoke to Sam the day before. Uh, I think hopefully uh, that he'll be available for selection this week. Uh, So, uh, you know, fingers crossed he's been a bit unlucky (laughs) with injuries uh, and he'll be playing, I think, did they play Poe? Friday. Friday, yeah. Would you tackle the question, please? Would you be an option for number eight? Who? Uh, yeah, he would be. Uh, it's almost a difficult one, isn't it, in terms of when you lose someone who's been there for a long time, that uh, do you go back, do you pick a player who's played, whose best position is seven, and we know that he can play at eight, or do you just back someone and say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to pick you. Uh, you play for your region in that position. Uh, you know, you're the best number eight uh, behind Toby, go out and get, give him an opportunity to be to be the best and see what he uh, shows in international rugby. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm a big believer in that sometimes, Matt. But I suppose it you know comes down to over the next sort of ten days uh, in terms of training. Uh, you know, who shows up uh, in those positions and who trains well and the combination that we'd like to pick going into Australia because as you can appreciate and well know with po- whether Pocock is fit or not not too sure but with Hooper and Pocock potentially being available uh, you know Australian is one of their strongest assets is the back row and it's always a, a challenge as we well found out back in 2015 in Rugby World Cup